Vultures get a bad rap. They eat dead things, and many would say they're not the prettiest birds in nature. But on this show, we decided it's time to give the old buzzard a little respect. It is often on the side of a road, eating carrion. That's a nice word for decayed flesh. Nasty, you might say. But these birds are nature's little garbage disposals. At the Chattahoochee Nature Center, wildlife director Catherine Dudek actually stops when she sees roadkill, puts it in her car, and brings it back for her captive birds. One of the interesting things about them is they are immune to diseases that most other birds would succumb to because the, their stomach acid is so incredibly strong that they are definitely mother nature's cleanup crew. And if not for them eating the carrion, roadkill, what have you, there would be a lot more disease and pests out, in, out that we would potentially, we and our domestic animals would succumb to. Sure. But they do have standards. Some researchers say they refuse to eat processed meat. Now, a dead mouse, well, that's a different story. These are wild vultures that hang around the center. They follow us with that amusing wobble of a walk. They began staying close to the center a few years ago, in part because the captive vultures share their food. They are incredibly clever, um, sneaky little rascals too from time to time. Um, the black vulture that's on exhibit here will give her a venison leg or something like that and let the two of them feast on it. And then when we go in to remove the leg because they haven't touched it for a couple days, she will get on it and will not allow us to take her play toy away. And she'll drag it around and sneak behind us and grab the garbage bags out of our hands, things like that when we try to come in to clean. There are 23 species of vultures across the world. They are divided into two groups. Old world vultures live in Africa, Asia, and Europe. are classified in the family Cathartidae. Unfortunately, more than half of all vultures are threatened or endangered, including the incredible California condor. It is the largest bird in North America, with wings that span nine and a half feet. They can live up to 60 years in the wild, and used to be quite common in the Southwest. Use of the pesticide DDT and lead poisoning from spent ammunition are two reasons the population dropped to less than 25 birds. Captive breeding programs in Arizona and California have boosted those numbers, and now more than 200 condors fly free. their numbers are still too low for comfort. The Andean condor lives along the Pacific coast region of South America. 
They have the longest wingspan of any raptor, up to 10 and a half feet. The males have a floppy comb on their heads, quite the handsome look for approaching females. But this vulture is also in trouble. Though better off than the California condor, it has suffered from loss of habitat and old customs that result in capture and death. One such custom involves forcing the vulture to fight with a bull. Vulture is also in the Americas and may be the most colorful of the lot. They are found in Mexico all the way south to Argentina. However, habitat loss is also taking a toll on this bird. It is believed the name comes from a Mayan legend which says this vulture carried messages between humans and God, making it a king or lord. Populations of turkey and black vultures found in the south are stable, at least for the time being. University of Georgia biologist Jim Beasley says when vulture populations decline, the ecological impact is severe. A great example of the impact of, of removing vultures from an ecosystem uh, was the, the India example or Asia example, where after those populations of vultures declined by 95, 97%, there was an increase in feral dog populations in rats. And because of that, there was an increase in rabies risk. Uh, so increase in, in rabies transmission. So end up being uh, severely costly, both economic and uh, ecologically. In India, the cause of vulture deaths was linked to consumption of cattle that had been treated with an anti-inflammatory drug. They also suffer from lead poisoning and other heavy metals. Poachers often put out poisoned carcasses to kill them. They don't want game wardens to see the circling vultures if, for example, they have just killed an elephant. When vultures are spotted, the poachers don't have enough time to steal the ivory tusks and get away. So in a sense, vultures are like the first line of defense against the poaching of endangered species. Beasley and his team captured hundreds of vultures over a two-year period as part of a study conducted at the Savannah River Ecological Lab near Augusta. Actually, much of the research took place at a landfill because, well, there's a bunch of rotten stuff to tempt a vulture. We use uh, wild pigs uh, as bait for the vultures, so not the most pleasant trapping experience to have to sit over rotting uh, carcasses to trap vultures, but, uh, but pigs are an excellent food for vultures that uh, help with the trapping. Uh, we spent hundreds of hours uh, in a blind uh, early in the morning trying to trap vultures in 100 degree temperatures during the summer. So uh, they're not the most challenging species to catch, but it takes a lot of patience, uh, a lot of perseverance. Uh, but we were able to capture, over the two years we trapped vultures, we caught about 300 vultures that we put uh, Potagial tags in. Potagial tags are the tags that uh, go on the wing of the vulture, and so we've got about 300 with tags. Each morning, researcher Amanda Holland got up at 4 o'clock in the morning and slipped into her blind where she watched for vultures. enough vultures, she fired a cannon that throws the net over the birds. Two, one. Then the work begins. Each vulture, all 300, had to be processed. It is a pretty routine procedure for any animal being studied by a biologist. Blood is drawn. Thank you. 
measurements taken. They are weighed. And in this case, a tag is attached to the wing. Here's an interesting tidbit about turkey vultures. They play dead when captured. Play dead. Dead. You yeah. dead guy. They just go limp as a type of defense mechanism. Now, when you look closely at a turkey vulture, there's a large hole in the beak. You can see right through it. That's one of the reasons turkey vultures have such a keen sense of smell. These vultures can pick up the scent of a carcass from miles away. Black vultures, which have great eyesight, but not so much in the odor detection department, will watch the turkey vultures and follow them to their next meal. Amanda spent months working with these birds, 12-hour days at a landfill with animals eating carrion. But then, Amanda loves vultures. It's my life's passion. I do love vultures. They are my favorite animal. I know you love these birds. <laughs> I know you think they're beautiful, but watching you pick them up, knowing that they're probably defecating on you and they may not smell so great, that can't be pleasant. Uh, you, you know, I'm able to see past that because these are spectacular birds. <laughs> they, I, I find them beautiful. And I like to see them up close. It, it, if you're fascinated in something, it's, it's really a joy to be able to work with it. And sure, it's gross, but you know, a lot of things are. <laughs> they are handsome in their own way. Look at the black vulture, dressed like the late Johnny Cash and cleaning up after a hard day's work. They actually do bathe a lot, which is why you will often find them near water. And they preen each other, picking off scraps of food and keeping insects away. They are not dirty birds. Black vultures are extremely social and families stick close together for years. They mate for life. Our society often portrays vultures as creepy and symbolic of death. But turkey vultures, called so because that red face looks like a gobbler, were revered in the Maya and Indian cultures. Their real name is Kuthort Aura. The word Kuthort means purifier, which is exactly what vultures do. They eat what is polluting the environment. Native Americans believed the flapping wings of vultures created valleys in the mountains. Even in ancient cultures, the goddess of truth, justice, and divine order is depicted with vulture wings. Researchers hope to get enough information to keep vultures at the top of the food chain. They are extremely susceptible to chemicals, so it is important to know where they go and why they choose those habitats. If you get past the ick factor, they truly are amazing animals. If you put a hog or a pig out in the landfill, how long does it take a group of vultures to clean that puppy off? Oh, goodness. Um, it could be hours. It depends on how many vultures wow. there are. I mean, it's, it's rapid, rapid. Wow. So they're voracious, and they can take down a carcass quicker than any other uh, scavenging animal. Some of the birds were also fitted with radio transmitters to keep tabs on their flight patterns. This research helps the Federal Aviation Administration find solutions to bird plane encounters. Wildlife collisions have claimed over 219 lives and more than 200 aircraft since 1988. 
The dramatic Hudson River landing occurred after Canada geese were ingested in both engines. In 1995, 20 crew members died at an Air Force base in Alaska when the plane hit geese on takeoff. And there have been deaths and collisions because of vultures. 19 people died in a crash in Nepal after the captain told air traffic control his plane struck a vulture. And these pictures were taken when a vulture crashed through the windshield. Beasley's team has already learned that black vultures fly at higher altitudes than first thought. Vultures are a problem just because of their size. It's the same issue with the goose, where maybe there aren't a lot of strikes with vultures, but if there is a strike, uh, it can do some severe damage. So uh, it's not just civilian aircraft, it's also military aircraft and those kinds of things. So uh, any sort of, anytime there's a plane uh, flying low altitude, it has the potential to uh, strike a bird. They are in so many places and can be a problem if they decide to roost on cell towers or places close to an airport. State biologist Jim Ozer also admires vultures. We stood under a water tower in the small town of Bowden where they've been hanging around for 15 years or so. They're experts at soaring flight, and they can cover a lot of ground with very little energy. And that's really what they need to do, because uh, it's not often if you find a dead animal just laying right where you want it to be. You know, you've got to do a lot of looking. So they cover a lot of miles to find that meal, and they cover those miles without using any energy. So especially on the day when the wind is right or their thermal is being kicked off, you know, they can uh, spend all day with hardly ever flapping at all. about vultures as Amanda, he views them as one of the most efficient birds he studies. Well, uh, some of the interesting behaviors that vultures have, uh, one is uh, one of their defense mechanisms. If you happen to uh, find a vulture on the ground and it can't escape, or you find some young ones in a nest, uh, one of their defenses is to throw up or regurgitate the food they've eaten. And if you think about it, it's, uh, that food was eaten already in pretty bad shape and then it's been in their stomach for several hours and they throw it up again. It's a, it's a pretty uh, nasty mess at that point, so that's enough to scare most would-be predators away. Uh, they have another interesting habit of what they call urohydrating, and they defecate on their legs, of course, which is mostly liquid, and as it runs down their leg, it actually evaporates and helps cool them off. And so that's a, it would seem like a nasty habit to us, but it, it works well for them. Urohydrating does for vultures what Sweating does for us. It just cools them down. So we have a bird that eats dead things, vomits to keep you away, and urinates or defecates on its legs. What's not to love? that vultures are ugly, but I totally disagree. I think they're beautiful. When you look at them in a new way, I, I guess, I see them, they have the, uh, the California condor, for example. They have the bald heads, 
which when they're interacting with one another, their heads will change color. They kind of express toward to, with one another. Their heads will change from reds and pinks and purples and blues, and they puff up their, 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 their necks. And they just do some spectacular things expressing with one another. Catherine Dudek could not agree more. Back at the Chattahoochee Nature Center, we enter the vulture pen, a kind of dive and duck experience. The vultures know Catherine has her net. She has to do regular checkups, and they don't particularly like it. It's a good girl. Why? Your keel feels nice. Yeah. The turkey vulture was hit by a car, and a damaged wing limits her ability to fly long distances. Catherine has worked with this bird for close to 20 years. The black vulture is having none of this interaction. I'm trying to harass her enough because I can't reach her. At the upper left, you can see her regurgitating, an obvious sign of displeasure and defense. They can lose a fair amount of weight very quickly because as graceful as they are in the air, they're not graceful on the ground. And so that way they can clear a lot of their weight to potentially get off the ground and take off from predators. Cars hitting vultures is a major problem. It is. Um, they're kind of like us at Thanksgiving. They will gorge themselves until they can barely move and they have to walk off some of that weight before they can fly. You probably can't hear it, but the vultures are hissing at us. New world vultures are nearly voiceless since they lack the equivalent of vocal cords. They hiss or grunt, but they cannot make the kind of calls normally associated with other birds. The black vulture was illegally hand raised and is not afraid of people. Watch her sneaking up behind Catherine. This lack of fear would be her downfall if she was left out in the wild. No. I'm hiding my toes. <laughs> Do not take my shoelace. Look at this. Don't take my shoelace. Look nope. at her. So you can tell this is not the behavior a wild vulture no. would, would ever do, as you can see from the turkey vulture. There is still much to be learned about vultures. Their breeding habits are somewhat of a mystery, and the way they nest makes research tough. Some vultures just find an isolated place and lay their eggs on the ground. Other vultures, like the condors, may only lay one egg every other year. That's just another reason recovery efforts are so critical. Vultures glide for miles without effort and have amazing features that help them survive. The bird some call disgusting turns out to be one of the more spectacular animals in nature. Now you can understand why ancient cultures worshipped these birds and why it's so important that they remain a vital part of our ecosystem. I'm Sharon Collins. We'll see you next time.